The information contained in this video is intended for educational purposes. We are not responsible for any damage to your device resulting from improper disassembly or installation. Proceed at your own risk. So a couple of months ago, I actually did a drop test on my Galaxy S6 and broke the glass. Since then, I have replaced a couple of screens on Galaxy S6 devices, but that's with the entire assembly, the glass, the touchscreen, and the AMOLED. For a while, I was kind of doubting whether it was even possible to do just the glass because on my first attempt, it was very difficult to get through the glue. I tried a few different maneuvers and they didn't really work out well. So I finally ended up going with a hot pleat and a molybdenum wire and was able to get through the glass all the way. So uh, you'll be able to see here how to remove the glass from a Galaxy S6. Make sure that you remove your battery first. Exposing a lithium ion battery to temperatures over about 167 degrees can cause some serious damage and danger to you and people around you, including explosions and fires. So by all means, take the battery out. I left mine in for a little while during the beginning, and once the temperature started to go up a little bit higher than I expected I would need, I did go ahead and remove it from the device. So definitely take the battery out and always use eye protection whenever you're working with broken glass or batteries or prying on anything that can shoot up and hit you in the eye. If you're looking for the complete display assembly replacement guide, just click on the little window there up in the top left hand corner. This is for removing just the glass and at the end of this video there will be some links where you can see how to install the new glass and prep the screen, get all the adhesive off. If you're in doubt, take a look at the video description. There will be links for tools, parts, and more information about this process. So this is my old screen here cracked up in the top right hand corner. We'll start by turning the phone off and then we're going to pry the back panel off. Now I have another video that goes into a little more detail on this, but what you're going to basically do is use a combination of a very thin pry tool, heat, and some patience, and you can get right underneath this piece of glass on the back and slowly peel it off. Now this adhesive is fairly strong and it's really tough to kind of preserve it. Even though I got this off in one piece, the problem is that the access screws are buried underneath the adhesive. So if you want, you can kind of try to peel them back and work around them. But I recommend you just buy a replacement piece of adhesive that's pre-cut for the back. It's very easy to work with, very inexpensive, and you can make this thing look like new when you get done, not have to worry about uh, wearing out the adhesive properties of this particular piece. So you'll see I started to take this off. You can see it is possible to get the screws out, but I recommend you just tear this whole thing off and start over when you get done. It's much easier that way. All right, so with that out of the way, make sure that you remove your SIM card tray. It goes through the rear housing into the logic board. So you're not gonna be able to open up the phone unless you take that out. And then we have a whole bunch of screws we need to take off from the back panel, including one that I actually skipped on accident. So got a little wrapped up in what I was doing and had to come back and take that one out later on. So do make sure that you get all these screws out. There's also a very small amount of adhesive at the bottom and top end of the phone they kind of prevent it from coming apart. So you'll encounter a very small amount of resistance there. Also be sure that you do not tear that pad on the back for the wireless charging. If you want, you can kind of pry that away. I didn't find that it stuck to the inside of the phone. It seemed just to stick to the frame, but if you want to be safe, you might want to peel this back so that it's not stuck to anything else because if you tear that, you'll have to replace it. Uh, so if you plan on using wireless charging, I'd probably just kind of peel that up before you do anything else, and then we can go ahead and remove the rear panel. So you'll see here, I noticed I was running into some resistance. Whenever that happens, you've probably got a screw, a clip, or some adhesive you're not aware of. So I went back, took that out, and now we're ready to go. Got the whole panel off from the back. Next thing we want to do is disconnect everything, starting with the battery first. We've got some antenna wires down here at the bottom, and then a series of flex cables that plug into the logic board at the upper end and another one that's actually underneath the logic board that you'll see here in a minute. So we, again, disconnect the battery first. That's always the, the order that we want to do things in. And then we'll go ahead and remove everything else, including the rear camera, earpiece, headset jack, and all that good stuff from the top. And the display assembly connector. And once we've got all those unplugged, be very careful with these antenna wires. They're, they're really, really easy to damage. So 
I recommend getting something like a pair of nylon tweezers and gripping them right where the metal piece plugs into the logic board. If you try to pull these by the wire, you can actually damage them and they'll tear apart, just kind of fall off of the end there and then you have to buy a new set. When you put them back together, you want to make sure you route those into the channels that are cut into the mid frame. You can see I just removed the camera there because it will fall out eventually if you turn the phone upside down. Uh, if you take the board from the top and just kind of angle it down this direction, you'll expose the connector down here on the bottom. So go ahead and unplug that one. We can set the logic board aside. And from this point, we're going to remove the earpiece speaker and this one's got a very interesting design kind of wraps around the top there and then you're going to have to grip where the um, piece is right here on the left hand side and just kind of pull that microphone out of where it's housed in that little rubber gasket and the next thing I would recommend you do is go ahead and remove the battery if you take something stiff like a credit card or a hotel room key and just kind of use a slicing motion to go up and down the side here of the battery over um, the course of the next minute or so, you can kind of work your way inside there to the point where you can get all the way underneath it with the card and it comes right out. You, you can apply a little bit of heat if you want to, but you shouldn't need very much. And of course, this is another phone that I worked on where I removed the battery and recorded it. So you'll notice I kind of switch back and forth between a couple of phones. And when I remove this battery in the next frame, you'll see that the battery magically reappears because I kind of did a couple of things out of sequence here. So uh, if you caught that, great. If not, not a big deal. The main thing is um, it's actually going to take this barcode label with it, which is kind of funny. But uh, just slowly work your way under the battery. And once you get through the adhesive, it's not too tough to get it out. You just want to avoid bending it because it is possible to damage the cells if you put too much stress on them. Next thing I want to do is heat up the front side of the screen and just kind of start separating the glass from the um, AMOLED. And the reason I recommend you do this is because I got a little bit careless on this before and actually caught part of the digitizer underneath the molybdenum wire. So once you get this to start bubbling up, I would work these two corners at the top and make sure you get underneath the glass, between the glass and the digitizer with your pry tool just before you start feeding the wire inside because if you're not careful it's really easy to snag the corners on this so if you just work under here for a second give yourself a good uh, eighth of an inch or so there at the corner that should be sufficient to allow the wire to get in between those two surfaces so i would do this on both um, both edges of the top end of the phone So you see we've got a nice little gap there. We'll be able to feed the wire through and not have to worry about snagging anything in the process. So the next thing we're going to do is secure the phone face down to the hot plate. And I'm going to make this uh, by popular demand. The temperature that I used is 75 degrees Celsius. And I was able to leave the phone on this plate, I assume indefinitely. Um, we're going to take out our tool here, but at that temperature, we've got just enough pliability that we can get through it. I think you might be able to get a little bit, go a little bit warmer, but I didn't want to damage the screen. Also, be very careful when you clamp this down. You don't want to put excessive pressure on the AMOLED itself. Uh, you can see I'm kind of feeding the wire in here around the top corners. And the first obstacle that we will encounter will be the earpiece. So what I did is I kind of worked through most of the adhesive until I got to the earpiece and then I just pried the glass away from the frame at the top just enough to get the little mesh earpiece out. And once I removed that, the rest of it was pretty smooth all the way down. So keep that in mind. Um, and you'll see I go back and forth here. I kind of heat it up, cut through it a little bit, check on my progress. And again, you'll notice uh, once I get inside there, I finally just at a certain point remove that little metal piece because that's going to block the wire from going through. So at this point, you can see I went ahead and removed the battery because the temperature, I, I was just kind of gradually increasing it. And when I got to a certain point, 
I realized that the battery was going to start getting beyond a safe temperature. So I went ahead and took that out. And uh, this is just really a series of going back, checking my progress. You can see at this point, I've already moved that little, removed that little piece from the earpiece. It's not difficult to get out. You just have to kind of pry it away just a little bit. And at this point, I'm just going to clamp the assembly face down, but I'm making sure that the clamp isn't super tight. And I'm also not clamping directly to the backside of the screen. I'm clamping onto the places in the mid frame that are raised. So that will kind of help distribute the pressure a little more evenly. And uh, here again, just checking my progress. And I can't even tell you how many times this wire broke, probably about four or five times during this process at a minimum. So it's a little tedious. You'll definitely need a hot plate. But this is the easiest method I found to do it without investing in some very fancy machinery. Um, the hot plate itself, you can pick them up now for about $58 last time I checked, and that was with free shipping. So it, it's a significant investment, but if you're going to be doing this regularly, uh, heck, if you're even going to do this once, it's going to save you a lot between buying yourself a new AMOLED and being able to do it yourself. So. Uh, for what it's worth, it was uh, mainly the challenge that motivated me to attempt this. And fortunately, I was successful or else I would have been really upset that I invested so much time getting this off. Because I probably spent a good 45 minutes uh, between setup and, and just being very cautious, taking the phone apart and working through here gradually. Now, when I got down to the bottom here, what I wanted to do was just get under the very edge because remember we've got some button cables down there that are between the glass and the frame so you can't really run the wire all the way through you just want to get down to the bottom of the display don't go into the area where the home button is located or you'll end up cutting through those buttons and not a big deal you can replace them but it means you're gonna to have to replace the entire charging port so uh, if you don't have one on hand that really sucks because you can't do the installation until you have a functioning charging port so you'll see I'm just cutting down until to the point where I'm certain that I'm past the visible part of the display. And now we're at the point where we can kind of open this thing up. And what's nice about it is once you cut through, it will not really stick to itself anymore. But again, the main thing that I'm being really careful about is down here at the bottom. I don't want to be too aggressive because it's so easy to damage not just the cable but also the little white rectangular squares that are attached to it which are what illuminate your menu and back button. So from here I've got just a little bit of adhesive left down at the bottom and I, I was a little unsure about how far to go with the wire because I didn't want to cut through that area. So what I'm going to do is just kind of work through here with some heat using the heat gun and pushing a card, a playing card, straight through until I've got all of the glass separated from the AMOLED. Now the big challenge before with this was the fact that the adhesive gummed up so much that it was very difficult to push a card all the way through. So once you've cleared this out with the wire, it becomes much easier to work with small areas like this that you have to separate. All right, so the next thing is just the separation of the glass from these cables. As I mentioned earlier, it's really, really tricky to be, um, well, let me just say you have to be very, very cautious down here. And you actually have to look down inside so that you can see where the cables are stuck to the glass and make sure you're getting between those two surfaces. It's really tough to get this on camera because of the way it's located, you know, between the two layers. So just make sure you peek down inside and take something very thin like a playing card and make sure you're staying in between the cables and the glass. And of course, applying heat regularly will make this much easier.
All right, so back to our good project phone here. And you'll see we've got a bunch of adhesive and stuff down here at the bottom. Just make sure that you don't take anything uh, with it that you don't want to, like those little cables. We've got just going to take this extra stuff off here. And you can kind of see how these things wrap around at the bottom. Uh, one in the corner and one directly underneath the bottom. It's kind of an interesting design. Not sure why they did it that way. All right, so the next thing we want to do is make sure that this thing still works. So I went ahead and installed the logic board. I'm uh, going to connect the battery. And unfortunately, you cannot just turn this phone on as is because the power button is located in the rear housing. So you've got to go ahead and just uh, pretend you're putting it back together for the most part, plug everything in, and then we'll go ahead, put the housing on the back, and we can make sure that we're not wasting our time by prepping the screen because if you've broken it at some point, then it's time to go back to plan B, and that is buying the entire replacement. You can see here the interface for the power button on the rear housing which is fine, but uh, in this situation, not very convenient. So we've got to go through and plug all this stuff in so we make sure we don't pinch any of these wires. And then you want to very, very gently install this. Remember, any pressure on that screen, it's very easy to damage at this point because there's nothing protecting it without the glass being on there. But if you just kind of carefully work your way around the edges, you shouldn't have to push too hard, get everything seated properly. If you don't have a good connection at the top, it will not power up because it's got to be physically making contact inside of the case. And you see I kept uh, kind of hesitating here. I didn't want to push too hard. But if it's not touching on the backside, you're not going to get a connection. So finally got this thing to power up. And you can see that we do definitely have a display. And in just a second here, we'll speed this up and go ahead and touch, test the uh, buttons, the touch screen, the home, all the navigation is working, and the digitizer seems to be functioning properly. So time to put the new screen on. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button and feel free to share it on the social network platform of your choice. Check out some of my recent repair and product review videos and visit us on the web at gocellphonerepair.com. Thanks for watching.